Welcome to the lecture on concrete. This is uh, lecture 18 of modern construction materials and uh, this is the last structural material that we will treat in detail before going on to look at uh, materials that are used as accessories in fittings and as finishes. Now concrete is my favorite material because of several reasons. It is a challenging material because it has to be economical for it to be used in a large scale. It is also a material that can be molded and given a form and a shape at the site, at the construction site itself. And then third reason which I think makes concrete very popular is that it can be made practically anywhere. It can be made in a remote site, say even in a jungle or in the middle of a city. As long as you can transport cement to a certain site, then it is easy to make concrete there. And as I said, concrete is economical. And uh, when I teach this lecture, I always ask uh, students if they can guess, if they do not know for sure, if they can guess what would be the cost of uh, 1 kilogram of concrete. And in case they have not had any idea of the economics, they are generally surprised that concrete is as cheap as it is today. I am recording this lecture on the 1st of January 2013 and here in India, in Chennai, the cost of 1 kilogram of concrete would be about 2 rupees. And this is less expensive, is cheaper than even a bottle of mineral water. Yeah? And I do not think you can get any uh, material which could be cheaper than this that is produced by man. So that makes concrete challenging and it makes uh, research necessary to develop the material further and to bring out the advantages. So let us start looking at what we can do with concrete. In this part of this lecture, I am going to show you pictures of uh, different structures and other applications of uh, concrete. A uh, lot of the pictures are taken from a very nice publication of the American Concrete Institute called Concrete, a pictorial celebration that was brought out in 2004 and uh, to this I have added some other pictures as well. On the header slide, you see a very nice uh, application of concrete. It is the shell roof of a restaurant at the Oceanographic Aquarium in the City of Arts and Sciences in Valencia, Spain. This was done with shotcrete, white shotcrete with fibers and regular reinforcement. And this was shot on uh, wooden form work and it made possible this very elegant structure with a thickness going down to 5 centimeters at the top of the shell. And I think no other material could have done such a great job in bringing out the elegance of this design. Now, if we go back in history and if we go back in history and look at initial applications of concrete for structural purposes we come across uh, this very nice arch, small though elegant from Prospect Park, Brooklyn, USA, built in 1872, where concrete was essentially used to replace stone blocks. This was erected by stone masons using cast on site elements, blocks of concrete unreinforced and concrete was essentially treated as an artificial stone. However, the advantage over stone is that it could be molded and given a certain shape instead of having been uh, having the necessity of being sculptured or carved. So, concrete is like an artificial stone wherever you could use stone you can use concrete and it gives the possibility of being molded and put in place as we would in stone masonry. Further, at the end of the 19th century, this viaduct in Scotland was made. Again, a very elegant structure about 380 meters long with 21 spans, and what this 
brings to light is that when you have a monolithic concrete structure, it can last for a long time and when the compressive strength of the concrete is utilized fully, reinforcement is not necessary. So, this is a structure made out of mass concrete, no reinforcement and it was a monolithic construction. Generally, we say that if concrete is cast against the previous layer within a period of uh, 2 to 3 days, then no special requirement is needed for preparing the joints as long as the joints are clean and rough. So, in this case, we have a structure that was made monolithically over 380 meters long more than 100 years back. And those of you who are Harry Potter fans might recognize this bridge and even the train that is going on top of the bridge as the Hogwarts Express and this uh, particular viaduct came in at least a couple of movies of Harry Potter. So, you can uh, see that concrete also has a role in the legendary uh, series of Harry Potter. There are many reinforced concrete bridges starting from the early 1900s. These are two very elegant bridges from Darjeeling across the Tista river built in 1933 and 1941 respectively. The top bridge is an arch bridge with 90 meter span and 15 meter rise and this at the bottom it has a span of 80 meters and a rise of 40 meters. Both these are arch bridges bringing out the advantage that concrete has very high compressive strength and instead of being very massive here there are slender elements and therefore, reinforcement is required because there could be some eccentricity of loading and bending that can be induced in the concrete. So, you have very elegant structure and also you realize that this location where these bridges are constructed are quite remote. It would be difficult to build this structure with any other material there. So, therefore, we conclude that geography and terrain do not really limit the use of concrete and as I said in the introduction as long as you can get cement to a certain place you can find the aggregates you can find water to make concrete and this concrete structure can last for a long time. So, we have a lot of elegant structures made almost 100 years back that have survived the passage of time. In terms of buildings and houses a landmark set of houses is in Union, New Jersey. These were mass produced concrete housing units developed by Thomas Alva Edison and it is said that these houses were cast in iron molds within 6 hours. Each house was cast in 6 hours and the form work was removed after 6 days and the house was ready for finishing. That is there were multiple houses made possibly with the same or similar iron molds. The concrete was cast very quickly and in 6 days the form work was removed to have the shell, the concrete shell of the house ready for finishing. So, what we can conclude from this and other similar applications is that when you have repetitive use of concrete it is highly cost effective that is you have a set of form work and you make the same structure or the same element over and over again. Then the cost of the form work per application becomes very small and you can have a very cost effective application in this case. Also this application and several others in modern times have brought out the possibility that concrete can be tailored to have early strength. It is not that concrete has to have to undergo a curing of several weeks or months to be having the strength required. For special applications concrete can be tailored to have earlier strength, early high strength if needed so that the structure can be used earlier or even finished earlier so that it can be occupied and used 
as soon as possible. In terms of larger buildings, taller buildings, this building in Cincinnati built in 1902 was a sort of a landmark because it was the first reinforced concrete skyscraper. At that time this was one of the tallest buildings 64 meters high with 16 stories and what was important at that particular period in time is that about 100 years back no other concrete building was had been built taller than two stories. So, here in terms of economy and safety it was decided that reinforced concrete would be used for such a tall building. So, again this brings out the economy of construction with concrete if you have again repetitive floors and uh, sequential construction then concrete is uh, cost effective and also concrete gives the feeling of safety. There is a safety cat that can be ensured for the inhabitants and the users for a reasonably long period of time and that is why we feel that we are safer with concrete construction. Another landmark structure is this dam the Buffalo Bill Dam in Wyoming in the United States built in 1910. It is one of the first large tall arch dams here you see uh, the dam in uh, this mountainous setting and the arch again brings out the advantage that concrete has in compression. It can take very high compressive stresses and therefore, the arch action is used to mobilize this advantage. In massive structures like in dams concrete is ideal again other than soil there could be no other material that can serve the purpose of such a large massive structure which requires weight to give structural stability as well as take of certain shape. Again we see that concrete can be fabricated practically anywhere in this case most probably all the aggregates came from this same location boulders crushed rock would have been used in this construction and we find that in uh, concrete used for dams the aggregates could be as large as 150 millimeters. The concept is the same we have uh, concrete made up of stone covered with cement paste that hydrates the cement paste is basically a mixture of cement and water. We will see later on that there are admixtures used mineral and chemical which modify the behavior, but essentially concrete is a mixture of stone cement and water and this cement reacts with the water and hydrates and gives it the solidity or the rigidity. Now, these aggregates can come from any source as long as they are of good quality and in the case of a dam or construction in a remote area the aggregates come from the surrounding hills and mountains and that is the case of a dam as well. A major structure that has influenced transportation through the world is the Panama Canal connecting the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans built originally in 1939 this is being extended uh, now. It was a 80 kilometer canal at that time cost about 380 million dollars this was in 1907. It has 12 locks for transporting the ships 300 meters long and 34 meters wide and it used 3.4 million cubic meters of concrete. So, you can see the walls of the locks and you can see how the ship is moving through you can see here the ship coming out of the lock. So, we can truly say that this structure or this application of concrete has provided mobility or enhanced mobility through the world and this application not only utilizes the ability of concrete to withstand 
courses, but also to prevent water from leaking through, from going through the walls of the locks. Concrete can be made impermeable, practically impermeable with proper mixed design and this has been shown through the ages and one good example is the Panama Canal. Even though concrete is made sort of in a low technology manner, it is uh, mixed on site, it is it uses unskilled laborers, good design proper supervision can make a structure impermeable and made to last a long time. Many modern structures have brought out the further advantages of concrete. This is a very elegant bridge from Oregon also in the United States built in the year 2000 where you have a system called the cast in place segmental arch construction. On the picture on the left you can see the construction process. So, this is the arch bridge being constructed and as you would know until the arch is complete the bridge has to be the bridge elements have to be supported. This is being done segmentally and the form work and the <coughs> this is being built segmentally and during construction the form work and the already constructed part is held in place by these cables which are suspended from these state towers. So, these state towers and the cables will be removed after the arch is completed, after which the arch through its shape can carry its own weight and loads that come on to the structure. So, during construction the partially constructed arch is held in place by these steel cables and this state tower. The final bridge after construction looks like this like the picture on the right where you have the arch and then you have the deck on top and these elements transferring the load onto the arch. So, it is always not necessary and sometimes not possible to have form work and support systems that come from below the structure like you, you would have in the construction of a slab of a house or any other building. In this case there has to be a more ingenious system of support, so that construction can happen without recurring to support from below the structure. Now, this is again a very elegant structure from Meghalaya built in 1997 the Jadukata bridge and here you see again something that looks like an arch after construction, but it is a double cantilever bridge. You can see both the halves cantilevering out during construction and here this was built again in a segmental manner with travelling form work. So, the form work is now here and this would be extended after this part of the concreting is done. This covered a span covers a span of this covers a span of 140 meters and as I said this is a double cantilever bridge and you can see how elegant the structure looks after construction. In 1998, there was a important project that connected the northernmost part of Europe to the rest of the continent. This is called the Great Belt Link and this led to a lot of construction involving a railway tunnel and two bridges between Denmark and Sweden. Until this structural connection was made the crossing had to be done by boat by ferry and this project gave the possibility of rail and road connectivity up to the north of Europe. So, as I said this project consisted of a railway tunnel and two bridges. What was very important is this was one of the first structures where a service life of 100 plus years was specified. 
At the same time, the Confederation Bridge in Canada was also built with such a requirement. We will come to that in a minute. So, the, here there were there was here there was an, an explicit requirement that the contractor and the designer had to show that this project would endure with little or no maintenance for more than 100 years. 1.1 million cubic meters of concrete was used in the project and you can see the size of this project the main span is about 1.6 kilometers. It rests on huge concrete pylons about 250 meters high each of them and huge massive concrete anchor blocks were required to hold the cables and the other end. This is a cable stay bridge, this is a suspension bridge, this is a suspension bridge and you can see that these huge anchor blocks were needed to hold the main cable. And as I mentioned, as I mentioned there is this other bridge built in 1997 called the Confederation Bridge in Canada, which also had a specified design life of more than 100 years. It is a 13 kilometer long bridge with 43 spans of 250 meters. The girders and the piers were precast on shore and with these barges with cranes they were brought on to the location and the cranes placed these girders onto the piers. Here you can see the main girder being readied for placing on this pier. So, this was a precast concrete construction principally and this ensured quality this ensured that this large life could be guaranteed through proper construction. Other important aspects included precautions taken to prevent pressure from coming through the ice that could lead to cracking of the piers and so here the, the pier shaft had an ice shield of high strength concrete and this ice shield was designed such that the ice as it formed would not give rise to high pressure pressures on the concrete that could lead to possible cracking. More pictures of the confederation bridge here we find that the span is being closed with this last drop in girder being placed again using cranes on barges this is how it looks in the winter time and you can see here better that the base of the piers are enlarged they are made of higher strength concrete also and with the shape and strength the pressure coming from the ice was resisted and here you see the completed bridge in very elegant form. This is the villa this is the villa viaduct in France built in 2004 with piers up to 240 meters height. This is a 2.5 kilometer bridge with 8 spans and again very elegant bridge this is a cable state bridge and you can see the piers coming up these are the temporary uh, cranes and support system for launching the girders in the deck and this is how the structure looks after construction. Very elegant structure for a long time this had the highest piers built in any bridge. Coming to buildings lot of our buildings that we use uh, today in most of our cities are made out of concrete. One of the very tall buildings is this from 311 South Wacker in Chicago built in the 1990 and for a long time this was the tallest concrete building. This has a complete concrete frame about 300 meters high and what was interesting is that several types of concrete mixes were used in this structure. Mostly high strength concrete with strengths reaching up to 80 megapascals. 
these concretes had silica fume and fly ash as mineral admixtures and also chemical admixtures such as super plasticizers. So, this is the building just in front of the Sears tower, the Sears tower as you know is a steel frame building and this is now the concrete building that we are discussing. So, here high strength concrete was used and mineral admixtures silica fume and fly ash were used to enhance the compactness of the concrete which gave higher strength and durability to the concrete. Now, why would there be different strengths used through the height of a structure? Obviously, the load decreases as we go up at the bottom more load comes uh, from the occupation and the weight of the upper stories and this could have led to more slender columns having the same concrete. However, that would cause problems in terms of the layout, in terms of the design and construction all the services would have issues in terms of rerouting. Therefore, in tall buildings it is generally such that the layout of each floor is maintained and therefore, it is more convenient to have columns of the same size and cost savings can be obtained by decreasing the strength of the concrete as we go upward. The same concrete strength need not be used, we can use lower strength at the top compared to the bottom which would give us cost savings due to a lower grade of concrete being used. Now, this is a structure from Jinan China the Shandong hotel which has a combination of cast in place concrete and precast concrete. Here the structural framework and the floor slabs are cast in place reinforced concrete that is they are placed in the wet state into molds in the site. However, the exterior part the exterior balcony the sun screens were precast concrete. So, there is a combination of precast concrete and cast in place reinforced concrete. What are the advantages of precast concrete? First of all these elements are made in a factory. So, quality can be maintained, faster construction can be done, it does not depend on the environmental conditions. So, basically quality and cost are primary issues when we go to precast concrete. Obviously, we have to take care of the transportation and the erection which have to be done with care and at low cost if possible. So, combinations of cast in place concrete and precast concrete can be utilized to get the required architectural elegance as well as quality of construction when we use them in a proper combination. This is a structure being constructed in 1977. This is the Calgary airport in Alberta, Canada showing construction with precast segments. The entire structure was built with precast elements. You can see the columns with these joints indicating that this piece and this piece were uh, made separately and they were assembled on site. The girders uh, were also precast the column segments were post tensioned. Post tension means that there are cables of steel used to apply compression so that these pieces or these parts are held together and they will always be under compression. You can look at uh, textbooks or even NPTEL lectures on precast concrete and that will tell you give you more information on how precast helps in concrete construction. So, the point to be made here is that we can make entire structures assembling precast segments that could be made in a factory and brought to the site and put together. So, that means we do not have to worry too much about environmental conditions on site quality because this is taken care of in the factory. However, it is very important to make sure to ensure that the segments are properly put 
properly aligned and the joints are taken care of. Here the joints become critical and when you have lateral loads it becomes even more critical and we should not have collapse because of the failure of the joints. So, when we use precast elements, precast segments in construction, joints are a critical aspect that require care. Another set of structures which utilize concrete very efficiently are offshore structures, offshore platforms like we have in the picture here. This is the Hibernia offshore platform in the North Atlantic Ocean built in 1997. Here you see on the right a picture of the constructed facility and on the left we see the base slab that is being cast. So, this is the slab and here you see where the pillars will come up which will hold the offshore platform. So, here you have these uh, large structures that are built partially on land and finished on site or built entirely at site made out of concrete and this stores the oil as well as facilitates drilling for oil in the middle of the ocean. You can have storage structures on land also built with concrete many are built with concrete. This is a storage silo in Jagdishpur. It is a very economical construction of an industrial building where you have a large span unobstructed with columns and a very simple roof structure which is a shell made out of concrete. The design, the design ensures that the concrete is in compression and therefore, it utilizes the advantage of the strength of the concrete and it provides for a span without any obstruction that can be used for storage. These are again very interesting storage domes from California built in 1990. These are used for cold storage. Hemispherical domes of 70 meters diameter were constructed and the construction was done with shortcrete over air supported forms. So, here the form work is like a balloon, it is a membrane that is inflated to give the shape required for the concrete structure. Obviously, it has to be rigid, it does not, it should not move during construction or when the concrete is setting and over the form, over the form work, over this membrane or the may over the inflated membrane concrete is short, the short crete is applied at the top. And when the concrete has hardened, the balloon is deflated, the formwork is deflated giving us this structure. So, you see here these hemispherical domes made on air supported forms. So, the formwork is always very important in concrete construction. Sometimes the cost of the formwork might be even more than the actual concrete that is used in very special cases and it in general has an important role in terms of construction efficiency, cost and quality. Another set of structures which are very important and more so today in India because of the construction of the metros or the metro tunnels is this set, another set of concrete structures which are very important are tunnels and this is more important today for uh, the Indian construction sector because of the construction of tunnels in the north, road tunnels and also the metro tunnel work going on in most of our cities. A landmark tunnel was the Euro tunnel built in 1994 across the English channel connecting France and the United Kingdom. You see here one of the openings of the Euro tunnel with trains passing through. The construction had short crete as the first initial lining. Here you see uh, the reinforcement prepared for short creting. 
and then the final lining was constructed with precast segments these were the segments made on shore and brought into the tunnel to give the final tunnel lining final lining of the tunnel. So, here you have a combination of short crete lining and precast segment line. Similar construction was used in the underground metro rail corridor in New Delhi. Two types of construction was done when the tunnel was close to the surface a cut and covers construction was done where a trench would be cut and concrete would be placed to form the wall and the roof of the structure. So, this gave a box like structure through which the trains would run. In other cases where you have more deeper tunnels required going under foundations or very deep under the ground a tunnel boring machine is used which during construction places the precast segments as the excavation happens the boring machine reacts against the previously constructed lining made out of precast segments pushes further and in this process also continues to lay rings of precast segment lining. So, this is how uh, it was done in the New Delhi metro and it is being done in other cities as well in India. In terms of dams there are fewer dams being constructed now due to environmental concerns at the huge impact that these uh, structures cause on the environment and the people living around these dams. However, a very large construction project involved the, that of the three gorges dam in China mostly completed in 2012 very little still to be done. It is the largest concrete gravity dam about 2.3 kilometers long you can see here how the structure looks 185 meters long 185 meters high and it is a hydroelectric project. So, it is supposed to have a huge impact on the water storage and the power of China after completion. Concrete can also be used for architectural purposes it can be given intricate forms and an elegant example of this is the Baha'i temple in Wilmette United States. It was built over a long period 1920 to 1953. It had white concrete cast in ornamental patterns. This was the first time that light was brought through the walls and domes of a building. So, instead of an opaque concrete construction there was these panels of white concrete with the shape such that light would pass through the domes and light up the interior of the structure in this case the Baha'i temple. We have many other applications that we can look at for appealing shapes and designs. This is the Priory Chapel of St. Louis United States built in 1962 designed by Obata and Nervi. Nervi was an architect who really brought out the moldability of concrete in his uh, designs. This is a thin shell reinforced concrete three rings of arches 1, 2 and 3 rings of arches all made out of concrete very thin shells giving this elegant structure for this chapel. More appealing shapes now everyone recognizes the opera house uh, of Sydney Australia this has become one of the emblems of Sydney if not of Australia. It is a curved concrete shell roof made up of precast post tension segmental arch ribs joined to form two spherical folded plates for each part. So, here you see the shell made up of two folded plates and it is made out of ribs that are put together and post tension. Another structure which again 
is easily recognizable is that of the Baha'i temple in New Delhi it represents a half open lotus you can see the shape brought out here and this again are folded plates making up this structure. The top is covered with marble panels and the interior is exposed concrete and if uh, you were to see it you will see the concrete you can touch the interior uh, faces and you can see the concrete it is made out of white concrete and it is an elegant structure which had a lot of difficulties during construction but has lasted very well through these years. Most structures which bring out the moldability of concrete this is the auditorium in Tenerife Spain built in 2003 designed by a famous architect Calatrava who uses white concrete in many of his elegant structures. Here the main hall is a cone shaped structure with a double layer of concrete and the roof is free standing except for the end which is steel all the rest of the structure is concrete again a white concrete and you can see a very elegant structure which gives the feeling of a wave in this island of Tenerife. Concrete can also be used in sculptures such as this in the Pacific centers in Seattle built in 1962 where we have a structure which looks like steel construction but it is actually white concrete it is open ribbed precast concrete vaults and this was intended to symbolize continuous search for knowledge through these soaring slender arches as they were designed. So, we see that concrete has a lot of possibilities we can have massive structures like dams we can have very useful structures like bridges and buildings and we can also have concrete used to express art form and concrete can also be used to express artistic ideas and values and it has a wide range of applications. In the lectures that follow what we will see is how concrete is put together, what are the components of concrete, what makes concrete so versatile and we will also see what are the material components that are used in modern concrete today that makes concrete have superior performance in the fresh as well as in the hardened state. Thank you.